Hi, once again welcome back to obstetrics and gynecology videos. Today we are going to see about alternative and complementary therapies in midwifery. First, let us see about the main complementary therapies that we are using all over the world. So, in that first one is Chinese medicine. It is originated in China around 4000 years ago. And actually, it is a harmony between or it's a balance between QI that is pronounced as qi in the body. That is qi is defined as the essence and the basis of all life or the vital energy. They are believing that it warms the body, it keeps the mind active and it creates breath, expels the baby during birth and gives us an each distinct personality. So they are believing that qi is the basis for our personality and for our energy also. The general category of qi can be broken into yin and yang, which represents the dualistic poles of nature. This is the identification or this is the symbol they are using for the qi. Next one is acupressure. See in the picture you can see they are applying pressure over this point. That is the in this acupressure they are believing that actually our body energy is passing through certain pathways throughout the body and these pathways they are calling as the meridians and on each meridian a selected point will be there and this point corresponds to the function of the various organs related to that area. So the practitioners of this acupressure or TCM what they are doing means they are massaging and compressing on this given points and they are believing that energy will be releasing when they are massaging and compressing on that points and that energy will stimulate or that energy will go to the corresponding organ or system and it can be restored and changed that is function of that organ will get restored that is the basis for this acupressure next is acupuncture see they you can see here they are using certain needles and they are pricking the body by using those needles here you can see in this acupressure they are inserting needle that is around the size of the needle will be around 32 to 38 gauge into the skin and the acu ac acupuncture points and these points are located along the body system but these are not dependent on the meridian system there are around 12 meridians or channel of energy flow each connecting to an organ and running distally throughout the body and this acupuncture in the case actually I told you that we are introducing needle into the skin the depth of the puncture varies depending on the location of treatment and the effect desired so if you want to have more effect sometimes you may go a little more deeper and the area also will be depending on the organ where it is affected and once if you are placing the needle the needle we are leaving on the place for a long time that is commonly between 15 to 45 minutes we will leave the needle over the site itself next one is homeopathy it's a system of healing founded by samuel heman a german physician in the late 1700s and homeopathy practitioners believes that each client is unique and care is directed to create and prescribe a remedy specific to that person so for each and every individual the treatment should be different that is the pattern they are believing but in allopathy and in other medicines if one person is coming to the hospital with a particular symptom they will be giving for example if fever is there means paracetamol will be given to all persons so that is common irrespective of the person the medicine will be same medicine is for the disease condition but here it's not like that even if the person is having same disease also the medicine may be different depending on the person that's a base although many standard remedies exist practitioners often blend individual remedies based on the client's specific needs next one is aromatherapy in the aromatherapy they are using oils uh, application of therapeutic oils over the skin these oils or creams or baths uh, sometimes they will give some inhalation and they will give massage over the body and these things whatever they are using lotion or cream or even if it is an oil bath that will get absorbed into the body and these oils or creams will be having some part pharmacological effect 
and this pharmacological effect will stimulate physiological and psychological reactions in the body that's the base of the aromatherapy even certain smell certain uh, sm uh, smell of certain items also will stimulate the body that's the thing they are believing next is hypnotherapy in hypnotherapy it's a form of deep relaxation actually with an alert mind producing alpha waves that in that stage the alert mind will be producing alpha waves and they we are going to the subconscious mind of the person in that stage actually next is spiritual healing and prayer spiritual healing and prayer include availability, availability of increased support system and community increase self esteem and self love and increase connectedness to the divine so this increased certain studies are showing that increased spirituality it is associated with the decreased maternal complications in delivery and labor and even it decreases the neonatal intensive care unit admissions also because when automatically when our self esteem and when our support systems are increasing our body also will get will start to relax and the effect will be there next is yoga in yoga it provides structured exercise that will increase the strength flexibility and endurance improve improve the mental attitude increase the self esteem it provides better sleep it brings healthier eating habits and it develops better communication pathways within the body mind and spirit so this is a thing which is happening in yoga that is they are taking care of mind body and spirit next is herbal medicine in that they are using certain herbs as the medicine these herbs are having side effects and contraindications same as like our allopathic medicines and this they are using in conjunction some some of them are using in conjunction along with other pharma pharmaceutical medicines and these herbs can counteract or intensive pharmaceutical effects and they can be dangerous if taken in higher than recommended dose some some of the herbs that much effect is there for some of the herbs and next one is nutrition and exercise i actually there is no need of giving separate explanation for nutrition and exercise because we know that if you are giving better nutrition and if you are giving better exercise our body will become strong and especially during the process of labor and all the lady needs energy and during the pregnancy also they need more nutrients and more strength this proper supply of nutrients and exercise will affect our entire body system it increase or improve the organ development and functioning of the organs it uh, helps for appropriate metabolism it increases the immune system response it gives maximum energy it enc encourage or increases the reproductive function it helps for the functional repair of injury or tissue damage and it helps for even appropriate emotional responses and behaviors also so all the systems of the body will get affected because of the nutrition and exercise and women seems especially sensitive to the lack of micronutrients and micronutrients in their diet and deficiencies of this micro and micronutrients will produce hormonal imbalances and sometimes irregular menstrual periods other and sometimes long acting endocrine dysfunctions uh, endocrine functions also for example if you are not giving adequate amount of iodine we know that it will affect the function of the thyroid gland and during the pregnancy if you are not supplying adequate amount of vitamins and minerals uh, what will happen to the mother and for the baby that we have seen in the previous video about the diet and pregnancy if you want to have more clarifications about the diet you can see that video about the diet and pregnancy next is chiropractic in chiropractic actually they are focusing on the spinal cord or spinal vertebra and they are attaining trying to attain a holistic balance of the body so they will just focus on the nervous system and mechanical framework of the body actually and the aims of the chiropractic treatment during pregnancy include improves the spinal alignment and stability of the pelvis minimize musculoskeletal related discomforts optimize neurological function improves the posture provide better space and environment for the baby reduce the stress enhance self image and feeling of well being enable the body to work and its optimum during the labor and after labor accelerate the postpartum recovery these are the main functions of this chirotherapy next is massage therapy 
it's having massage is having a lot of effect we know that when you are doing the massage our body's circulation will increase lymphatic drainage will increase so it is not only beneficial for the pregnant lady it is beneficial for everyone it benefits the therapeutic massage are vast the benefits of therapeutic massage are vast it provides physical emotional and mental effects gentle massage especially beneficial for women with high risk pregnancy and those who are having complicated pregnancy with multiple gestation preterm labor or both see when you are doing the massage it will reduce the cortisol levels and it will reduce the blood pressure also and it will increase the flow of lymph through the body and it will increase our immunity and it also can stretch and loosen the muscles and it will improve the blood flow it will facilitate the removal of metabolic waste and it increases the flow of oxygen and nutrients to the cells and tissues and massage stimulates the release of endorphins and it will decrease the pain and it gives mental relaxation it reduces mental stresses and it gives clarity of thinking and actually emotionally also it satisfies because it satisfies the need of a human being for touch and caring and of course it provides a sense of well being and it reduces the anxiety also next is osteopathy this osteopathy focuses on restoring and maintaining balance in the neuromuscular systems of the body osteopaths use arms and legs that is they are just focusing on the positional changes of arms and legs they will just do the opposition of the arms and legs actually they are just manipulating the body these osteopaths aim to preserve the balance between joints muscles ligaments structures and nerves which allow the body to function at its most optimal capability next is craniosacral therapy it's a method of evaluating and enhancing the function of physiological body system called craniosacral system and it includes the membranes and cerebrospinal fluid that surround and protect the brain and spinal cord actually they are massaging and they are doing some manipulations and they are enhancing the function of this brain and spinal cord next we are going to see the management of certain common problems in midwifery by using complementary and alter, alternative therapies first one is hyperemesis gravidarum we know that hyperemesis gravidarum is excessive nausea and vomiting during the pregnancy and we can use acupuncture that is by stimulation of the p6 point by using the acupuncture has shown that it will relieve or reduce the nausea and vomiting it calms the digestive system it decreases the fatigue and it expels the phlegm and decreases the nausea and vomiting next is homeopathy the homeopathic medicines like sepia pulsatilla homeopathic lipac all those things are effective in the nausea and vomiting during the pregnancy and next is hypnotherapy in hypno by using hypnotherapy we can guide the mother and we can make the mother to imagine herself as like she is eating and enjoying and retaining familiar foods in the relaxed environment where she feels maximum secure once if she is getting that feeling automatically her nausea and vomiting will start to decrease next is herbal therapy cutaneous application of wild yam cream dandelion root tea ginger rosemary fennel lemon balm infusions can be helpful for for reducing the nausea and vomiting during the pregnancy next is nutrition therapy food which are rich in protein and we should advise the mother to we, we should not give the greasy and fatty food for the mother carbonated and non carbonated drinks and skews to with the lemon grape and orange juices will all are also helpful for reducing the nausea and vomiting next is acupuncture stimulation of acupuncture point ub67 located on the lateral edge of the small toe with laser acupuncture acupuncture electro acupuncture or moxibustion this technique of moxibustion involves gently gently heating ub67 for 15 minutes 
once a day for 10 days total. So this also will reduce the nausea and vomiting. Either we can massage or we can apply pressure or you can apply gentle heat over the UB67 points. That point is actually near to the lateral edge of the small toe. Now we are going to see the alternative therapies or remedies for the different positions of the baby. Sometimes we cannot expect that the baby always with the baby will be in the cephalic presentation or in the vertex presentation. Sometimes the baby may be having breast presentation or shoulder presentation all those things. And this acupuncture or other alternative therapies are having the capacity to turn the position of the baby also. First let us see about the homeopathy. In the homeopathy, this pulsatilia, they are believing that it is successful in encouraging the babies to turn. So the use of this will makes the baby to turn by himself. Next is hypnotherapy. The hypnosis has been used to facilitate both spontaneous and external version. That is version means manually we are changing the position of the baby. But this hypnotherapy is also facilitating the change of the body, uh, change of the baby without doing any manipulations. Next is for the constipation. Aromatherapy that is citrus oils including mandarin, orange and grapefruit is used in conjunction with massage technique and it will relieve the constipation during the pregnancy. Next is yoga. Even mild walk or practice of yoga itself will boost up the digestive system and it will increase the bowel movements also. And when these bowel movements are increasing, naturally the constipation will get relieved. Next is herbal therapy. Herbs such as dandelion root, yellow dog, flax or physelium seeds and catnip uh, can be useful or it can be used for relieving the constipation. Next is nutrition. Eating fresh vegetables and pieces of fruits it will increase the bulk of the stool and increasing the water intake that also will that is the woman is supposed to take a whole gallon of water that will reduce the constipation that is we know that more fiber containing food and bulk forming food water more water intake all those things will reduce the constipation the massage therapy is used, also useful for relieving the constipation Gentle massage following the root of the large intestine in clockwise direction can stimulate the peristaltic movement. That is in the clockwise direction following the root of the large intestine if you are massaging it will stimulate the peristaltic movement. And we know that if the peristaltic movement is getting stimulated bowel movement uh, will occur and it will relieve the constipation. Next we are going to discuss about a very common issue during the pregnancy that is low back pain or back pain. So for reducing this issue, we can use the yoga effectively. Actually, we can start to practice yoga even before the conception and during the pregnancy also we can continue it. And this will strengthen the body and it will help for holding the baby's weight during the third trimester of pregnancy. Actually, why the mothers are getting pain means when the weight of the abdomen is or and uterus is increasing, it will apply pressure over the muscles and ligaments of the abdomen because it is holding that weight for a long period and this will produce a stretching effect on the back muscles also and because of that only the lady is getting the pain mainly and when we are doing the yoga these muscles and ligaments will get strengthened so if it is strength naturally pain will be less and another advantage it will stimulate good posture and it prevents sciatic nerve discomfort and lower back pain also so these are the benefits of yoga on the back pain. Next we can see about the homeopathy. If you are applying arnica, it will relieve the, it's a homeopathic medicine and if you are applying it, it will relieve the log back pain and a warm bath with Epsom salt and aromatherapy oil such as lavender, rosemary also can be useful for reducing the back pain. Next nutrition. Food sources which are rich in calcium, it include milk, hard cheese, yogurt, leaf, leafy and green vegetables, almonds, sea vegetables and salmon and black strap molasses. These things will give more amount of calcium and if calcium supply, supplements are there means it will make the 
or it will help the mother to retain the strength of the bones and it will help for the proper functioning of the muscles also so that way it will reduce the pain and if we are so we should advise the mother to avoid coffee chocolate cola cocoa red meats all those things next one is massage therapy and massaging we know that already we have seen the effect of massage massage will be relaxing and relieving pain so because of that relaxing effect naturally endorphins will be producing and this endorphins will reduce the pain that we have seen already so the same thing can be applied even for the back pain also and even massaging chairs or certain modification comfort devising comfort providing devices are also available that can also can be used for reducing the back pain. next is osteopathy it is correcting sacroiliac problems and sciatica the manipulations are based on the accurate diagnosis and mostly involve long leverage therapies they are just focusing on the musculoskeletal systems of the body and they are reducing even the sciatica also so these are the major complementary and alternative therapies we are using or we can use during the pregnancy so all so far we have seen that it is mainly using for reducing the nausea and vomiting sometimes it is using for the positional changes of the body and it's using for constipation and along with that it is using for reducing the common disorders that is back pain during pregnancy also so thank you for watching this video see you soon with a new video